Hi, my name is Dan Doherty. I'm proud and honored to say that I'm affiliated with PinkFishing.com and a member of Team Pink Fishing, which is an amazing group of people who share a passion for fishing, but more importantly, are passionate about raising awareness for breast cancer. I want to share with you a story, our story, a story of life and a story of hope, a real inspiration. This is a story, one written from my perspective as a loving husband, proud father and caregiver about my lovely wife, best fishing partner, and lifelong companion, Gail Ann Doherty. Our story begins back in Philadelphia where I was awestruck by this beautiful girl I watched leaving my building. I followed her trying to get a better glimpse of her and maybe attract her attention. She was a petite little thing, flowing blonde hair, dressed to the teeth wearing these cute little boots. I was excited to find out that she worked on the top floor and I made sure I was the one to pick up her daily paperwork from her department. I found out she had caught the eye of another fellow I worked with and I was determined to ask her out for a date first. I knew that she was something special and I couldn't miss the opportunity. I was going to wait for her that afternoon at the elevators and much to my dismay, the other fellow was already there. His intentions were the same as mine. As the door had opened, Nick approached her and said hi, but she just gave him a smile and she walked past. Being a little scared, I stepped in front of her and said hello and introduced myself. She had the face of an angel, beautiful blue eyes, an incredible bright, bright smile, and a glow about her that just took my breath away. I quickly asked her if she would like to go out somewhere, anywhere she wanted. I asked her for her phone number, forgetting I had nothing to write on, so as she gave it to me, I wrote it on my hand. She giggled, giggled a bit and told me to call her that night. That was the day she captured my heart. It was a very snowy night and the buses weren't running well in Center City and I didn't want to wait, so I walked all the way from town to her house. From that day onward, I never looked back. We did everything together. We traveled, she enjoyed skiing, we had houses every year, but it was I was just content to be anywhere with her. My family and friends just loved her. She got along with everybody. Gail would just light up any room she walked into. Life was great. We moved into an apartment together and just were just loving life. Eventually I proposed, and I say that because everyone would say, when are you going to marry that girl? She accepted and made me the happiest man in the world. We bought a house and she made it as cozy as can be. We had a little bit conceiving, problem conceiving, but after a while we were blessed with our first child, Allison. Gail was a great mother, loving and caring, and she took care of, great care of both of us. As usual, life has a way of getting in the way and certain stresses were taking a toll, but Gail was our strength. When we had our second child, Amanda, we were so happy. We found our dream house in a small town in New Jersey, close to family and friends. We were now four peas in a pod. Sadly, one day, Gail felt a lump on her breast and knew something wasn't right. The first doctor she saw said he didn't feel it, but she insisted and had more testing done. When we got the news, our hearts sunk. She kept her head up, though, and she said she was going to beat this. To this day, I don't know where she got her strength from, but Gail was incredibly strong and positive. We went back and forth from tests to treatments and back again, all the while her with a beaming, glowing face. By the way, face was a nickname I gave her, and she always called me Doc. Never did I hear her say, why me? Gail took the card she was dealt and handled it with amazing dignity and grace. She had her mastectomy and chemo, and when finished, the doctor told her that she had a chance of it coming back, but a small chance. We moved in on and began a normal life until a couple years later, Gail found out it traveled to her back. She went through surgery and treatment, but still was strong and positive. What an amazing woman. Sadly, her cancers were on the move and began popping up in other parts of her body. Each time you could see that it was taking more of a toll on her body, but rarely did she complain. We had such a great support group of family and friends that eased the burden. They all knew what a special woman Gail was and pitched in with dinners, visited her, called her on the phone just to chat, or just offered a thought and a prayer, all of which was greatly appreciated by my family. I worked nights, so I had the days to go fishing which she was always happy to come along. We both fished out of kayaks, and even though at first I know she did it for me, I know quickly she enjoyed it just as much as I did. I was so happy that we had 
time together exploring nature and just doing something else we both love together. She was truly my best fishing partner. Eventually, she couldn't make the trips anymore, but always told me to go. She knew how important it was to me. When I was out fishing alone, though, I felt a sense of emptiness, but I knew she was with me in spirit. I dreaded it, but my job closed up in New Jersey, and the options were limited as to where I was going to have to move for work. I felt the best opportunity for longevity of position was down here in Virginia. My main concern was to make sure I maintained good health care so Gail could continue treatment. The sad thing was we had to leave our home, family, and wonderful support group behind. We tried to make the best of it, occasionally traveling back to see folks, and we were even lucky to have family and friends make the long trip to see Gail. Her cancer took such a toll on her, especially on her back, that she had to undergo a major back operation. Seven years she had been battling this nasty disease and it had weakened her immensely. The surgery went well, but the recovery brought on a comatose state and serious infections. She hadn't eaten in two weeks and I was scared. But the surgeon made some adjustments in medication and wanted to begin feeding her, thinking Gail could make a turn for the better. I was hopeful, but the next day I got a call from the respiratory doctor telling me that she had pneumonia and a serious infection. I had asked if they were feeding her, and his comment was, why feed her? She has cancer. We can make her comfortable until her time comes. I told him he was lucky I wasn't right in front of me, or I may have choked him. I immediately moved Gail to another hospital, and they worked furiously on her. At one point, they said they did all they could, but I should probably prepare for the worst. I refused to give up on her because she had been such a fighter for so long. To the doctor's surprise, she made a turn for the better and was able to leave hospital after three months and come home with us. She walked with a walker and even made to a cane and sometimes nothing at all, but the cancer stepped in again and she broke her femur. She was rushed in for another operation and in addition to all the hardware already in her back, they put more rods and screws in her thigh. She did the best she could to maintain that beautiful smile but became more and more weakened. Through all this, I did the very best I could to make her happy and comfortable, and our daughters, Alice and Amanda, were nothing less than amazing. I could, couldn't have done it without their strength. They both weren't happy to have to move this long distance away, but they made the best, mainly for their mom's sake. Her oncologist, Dr. Gisa Shunem, a lovely, upbeat, very thorough and positive person, was great throughout her treatments. Gail put her trust in Dr. Shunem. Recently, though, Gail was in, in, a, in, in and out of the hospital for transfusions and other treatments and was developing major swelling in her legs and her feet. Her appetite had, and mobility had worsened. I always tried to put in front of her something she would like. I would make spaghetti, but she said she wouldn't want it. And I would say, well, what do you want then? She would say, pork chops, mashed potatoes, and gravy. I would run right out and get it and whip it up fast before she lost interest. For a while, that worked to get her food in her but eventually she began eating less and less. I would get a bit frustrated with her. I would say, do it for the girls and me as well as you. Food is medicine. I feel so bad at times I would get short with this beautiful person who fought so valiantly. Last week, she went back into the hospital to try to control the swelling, which basically made her bedridden. This time you could feel things were different. They did tests, but she told Dr. Shun she knew that this was the end of her battle. She had done all that that beautiful petite frame could, but had accepted the fact that she had little or nothing left. She wanted her last moments on this earth to come peacefully. I'm glad that the girls and I, along with her sisters, were able to be with her and comfort her. Even two of our best friends dropped what they were doing and braved the trip to be close to her at this time. We all got a chance to tell her that we loved her and she had told us all as well. We had a Catholic priest come in and give her her last rites. She seemed more at ease, and so did we. Early Sunday morning, Palm Sunday, everyone decided to go home to freshen up. I stayed behind. Gail didn't want Allison and Amanda to be there when she left this earth. There she was worrying about them, hoping not to cause them any extra grief. She was in no pain and at peace. I watched her as she took her last breaths. It was cloudy and gray out all morning, 
But at that moment, the room became real bright and the sun came out. I'm so glad I was holding her hand as she passed into God's hands. No more tests, no more treatments, no more pain. What I saw at that moment was the face of an angel and a glow about her that took my breath away. I will love you always and forever. Thank you for listening. I want to thank all those at Pink Fishing and Team Pink Fishing for always being there, reeling in the cure.